Rising interest rates will leave tire tracks on the world's great beaches. Rising interest rates will leave tire tracks on the world's great beaches. Rising interest rates will leave tire tracks, hence the little cars, on the world's great beaches. Welcome to The Knock-On Effect, the show that quite clearly is not for everyone. Our job is to start with the thing you know and show you what it actually means. So joining me today is our first rate guesser, Justine Underhill. Thank you. And the man whose word is always his bond, the professor himself, Roger Hurst. Hello, everyone. It seems you're doing a little bit of calculus today, Roger. Well, I've got some extended lecture notes for this one because I think we're going to need them. All right, very good. It's a, it's a cool tie pattern. It's very, very avant-garde. So Roger and I, Justine, are going to try to get you from rising rates to sandy tracks. And your job is to figure out where we're going before we get there. Okay. I should note, after we do get there in today's second segment called Your Move, we're going to have a little debate over whether stocks will or will not fall 20% in the next year. I'm excited for that one. Yes, me too. But uh, let's start at the beginning with what we've been seeing, because the biggest move in the markets recently has been this incredible rise. Actually, we saw a bit of a fall Friday really volatile um, uh, uh, markets for these yields. But for the 10-year yield, it, it rose above 3%. It hit the highest level since July of 2011. And rates around the world have been generally rising this year as well. The 10-year. That's the U.S. 10-year yield. But but it's been across the curve, across the world. Professor, what, what have we been seeing there? The bonds and, and yields have been a real obsession for the market over the last 18 months. And there's, as you said, that big level 3% on the US 10-year. And it's the US market that really leads all the others. Um, and we've seen it in Europe to, to a lesser extent, um, but certainly some moves going on there. I think the big moves that have happened are at the front end of the curve. And when you look at things like three-month money, so the three-month T-bill recently hit 1.9%. Uh, which meant it overtook the dividend yield on the S&P for the first time again since, I think, 2011. So basically, it's getting more attractive. It's not great for news for those who own bonds now, of course, for those playing along at home, rising rates, falling bond prices. But in general, for if you want to buy bonds in the future, it's, it's pretty good news. Okay. Before we get to all the knock-on effects, do you care to guess how we get to tire tracks on beaches? Oh, I like the end point with the beaches. Um, okay, here's my totally... Wild guess. Let's hear it. So rising rates in the U.S. Yes. means that emerging markets won't be as attractive to invest in. So okay. they're going to fall on hard times and maybe they have dollar denominated debt. That's going to be harder for them to pay back. All sorts of issues there. These emerging markets oftentimes have some of the most beautiful beaches. Yes. And so okay. but because they've fallen on hard times, maybe they won't be able to pay for um, policing the beaches. And so more people are going to start driving on the beaches. Oh, um, so, that's, so, that's so next illegal. Fast and Furious is that Tokyo Drift will be. The Sandy Beach Drift. OK, <laughs> I thought you were going to go with the country there, but no. <laughs> I could C minus C minus. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right, you're already getting bad grades from the professor. Oh, no. Uh, so <laughs> I'm going to start. The first knock-on effect is oh, that, that... wasn't correct. No, oh, sorry. No, that okay. was uh, slightly, slightly off. Slightly <laughs> okay. off. Vin Diesel is not... Uh, There's a lot of room for improvement. Let's put it that oh, way. Oh, no. Yeah, okay, well, you guys will guide me along the journey, so I'm excited to see where this goes. Yes, um, me too. So when interest rates rise, and the market's the interest rates we observe, so do rates everywhere in the world. It, it's just, it, as Roger said, the U.S. 10-year kind of leads all the rates higher. So wherever you put money, you're going to get more for it. If, and, and whenever you borrow money, you're going to pay more. So, so anything, like mortgages. Yeah, and, and the specific place I'm going here is credit card debt. Professor. So the annual percentage rate, the APR, that is an adjustable number. And so if prime rates, i.e. The, the Fed funds rate goes up, then the APR will go up as well. And currently, Americans owe over $1 trillion in revolving credit, which is mainly credit card debt. So higher interest rates means higher APRs. So here's the next question is, what do people buy with credit cards? Mm, um, food and clothing. And yeah, there's, no, there's no, not really an actual answer. I mean, no, it's all right. Cars? It's all correct. Did yeah. you buy this with a credit card? I... I think so. no. I think I used the debit card. Oh, well, okay. I know, usually I do with the credit card to get the points. But one thing that people buy with credit cards is vacations. So according to a study from the financial planning company LearnVest, um, 
whatever that is. Uh, Seventy-four percent of Americans have gone into debt to pay for vacation. I, I don't think they went to a bank and said, uh, "Can you uh, to apply for a loan to go to Mexico?" So they probably are just doing it on credit cards, paying it back later. That leads me to my next question, which is, what sort of people rely on credit card debt more, or more, more likely to go on credit card fueled um, vacations? Credit card fueled binges. Um, sure. Yeah, it's fine. I mean, may- what type of people? So are we talking about like what, what sort of in- is there a certain age? Maybe? Okay, if we're looking at ages, I feel like everyone uses credit cards. There's no there's no specific age, but maybe everybody everybody wants those credit card points. Right, but but some people are more likely to go into debt than others. Roger. True. Um, You're absolutely right. And generally, it's going to be the young who are more reliant on credit cards and also reliant on their parents in order to pay for stuff, because obviously student loans have saddled this generation with debt. And so therefore, they don't have much free cash flow. Um, And in the UK, we've got some pretty good figures, actually. The Financial Conduct Authority, the FCA, um, suggests that 25 million Brits from a survey, this is, 25 million Brits have currently have debt issues. 4.1 4.1 million of those are in serious financial difficulty, and that 4.1 million is really concentrated in the 25 to 34 year age cohort. It sounds like a pretty terrible idea to go on a vacation if you're swimming in debt. Yeah. I mean, is that harsh? No, I, 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 but I'd rather swim in the ocean than swim in debt. Go, get, okay. okay. get, get all your troubles away, go on holiday. You, you've actually found a specific sub industry that could get hit especially hard by rising credit card uh, credit card rates. Well, that's right. There's the the um, the young, and there's in, in fact a specific one, Thomas Cook, um, called uh, Club Eighteen Thirty. Now that's just a, a kind of a, now a catch-all for anyone of these kind of young person holidays. But the sun, sex, and sangria holidays um, were very very popular. In fact, I I used to enjoy going on these myself. And these were places to the various islands around the Mediterranean, and the the young would be going on these now. These are being hit from two angles. One is that fewer of these holidays, you know, fewer young people apparently want sex and sangria and sun. They more want to go on sort of more interesting vacations. But also, these are the group that were paying for them on credit cards because they didn't have any cash to pay for them. It wasn't for the points. It wasn't so they could get extra clothes. They had no alternative. So this demographic is being hit and these types of holidays are being hit. Did you actually go on a sun, sex and sangria holiday, Roger? I got the, the, the sun and the sangria, but uh, in those days, yeah, <laughs> oh, no. I wasn't quite as good looking as I am now. <laughs> okay. okay. Oh, professor. Um, so, so this is a real, real thing. I mean, this is a, a popular apparent. I'd never heard of it, but the eighteen to thirty club is a popular thing in Britain that is that is shutting down. This is their last season, and they go to kind of beachy, sort of. I don't want to say trashy, but sort of uh, places that are really dominated by tourists in the Mediterranean area, right? So you're talking Greece, parts of Spain. Yeah, parts of me. A place like Magaluf was one of the most famous ones, and Ayanapa in the in, in the Greek islands. Which one did you go to, Professor? By the way, I was uh, wearing my mankini in Magaluf. Imagery I don't want, but maybe that could be the next. That's photo. That's the next photo. Is the mankini in Magaluf? Um, wow, that phrase. Okay, so 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 we are getting there, but so far we've only focused on the negative impacts of rising rates. That it's going to cause some people to pay more in credit card debt. It's going to make some things less attractive. It's going to make it harder for millennials to go on vacation. Right, on the, the 3S uh, vacation. But, but um, not everyone is hurt by rising rates. With that clue in hand, would you care to take another crack at getting to tire tracks on, on beaches? Not everyone is hurt by rising rates. Yes. Uh, Whoa. Um, let's say maybe savers okay. are helped yeah. by raising rates. Yeah. They get a little bit more money. Sure. Uh, so a lot of people will save up for cars. All right. So, okay. It's all right. We'll get there. We'll get there. We'll get there. So, so Ro- Roger, who is helped by uh, increasing yields? It's going to be the, the retired, basically, those who have the savings. Because, I mean, if you take all the demographics... The young and the sort of the middle aged, they're the ones that are still saving. So those who have retired, those who have the cash, who've taken their money, they had it in the bank, but they were receiving very little in, in the days when you had zero interest rates. So as interest rates go up, these guys are going to have more disposable income. Simple as that. I, I just want to throw a small caveat in here, which is that if r- rates are rising because of rising inflation and prices are going up, it's not really going to help savers because they're just going to end up paying more for that can of tuna. And it's not, it's not right. really going to help them out. 
But so the real rate is what we care about. Right. But those have been have been rising as well, uh, have they, Roger? That's true. Yeah. So we've been seeing real rates um, rising. But I think the key thing here is that the, the interest rates have been rising faster than inflation. So we've been seeing this opportunity where your absolute level of cash, what you get in your back pocket is, uh, is certainly going up. Right. So let's get back to, to the effects here. So what I'm trying to get at with this benefit for retirees is that older folks might end up taking uh, more vacations. There might be more cruises, more trips to some uh, uh, sex, sun, and sangria climbs. Uh, Roger? Yeah, I'd hope so. I mean, that, that, I think that's the thing is that, um, that certainly... It's sangria is the one I don't want to say. <laughs> I ironic. was a sangria yeah. one. <laughs> anyway. I, I, can, I can imagine there's a whole generation of people from before me who are going to go, I want to do the 1830 for the last time, but it's more kind of my, my older age group that's going to do it now. They're going to try that one last treat. So more people are going to take these vacations because they've saved more money and because real interest rates are increasing. And they're going to go to some of the same islands that these young folks have left. But they might get around these islands differently. Would you care to solve? Okay. So. Yeah. Rising rates. Yeah. Means that retirees and, and savers are going to have more money because real rates are actually higher. So they have their feeling more wealthy, the wealth effect. There you go. And so then because of that, they're going to go on more vacations. And because they go on more vacations, uh, they're going to not go through airplanes. They're going to go through cars. <laughs> Actually, I, I was going with something a little more specific, which is that as they get around the beaches themselves, they might oh. wheel around. Because they're old, so they can't walk around the beach, so they have to drive on the beach. Or actually, they could. What, what we've see, been seeing increasingly is floating wheelchairs, where you kind of roll on the beach, and then you can actually roll into the water, float around, and, and come back. Uh, oh. This is actually literally happening. So in Corfu, which is one of those 18 to 30 destinations, one of the ones they would travel to, uh, they have inc- introduced floating wheelchairs. Uh, an article from this past September, the island's deputy mayor said, we have been contacted by major travel agents in the UK who have special needs clientele, as well as by agents from France, Belgium, Germany, the Netherlands, and Italy. Hence why rising rates will create tire tracks on the world's great So beaches. this is really happening. Now, there are a lot of caveats here. I mean, obviously demographics are shifting, so there are going to be more old people, older people in general, and maybe fewer younger people want to go on vacation. For a whole, there are, there are a lot of uh, little effects here. But... On the margins, I do think rising rates will will lead to more more of these floating wheelchairs on, on beaches. Roger, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I could have done with one of those when I was younger, actually. And when I was about 18, I'd have quite, found it quite handy being pushed around given the state I used to be in. I don't know if that would have helped you with the, uh, anyway. The demographic is certainly shifting. And I think it's, it's, I think more importantly is that we're seeing the younger generation as well. They're moving away from the beach style holidays. They can't afford them in the way that they used to. Whereas things like cruises, they're on the increase and it's been driven by the older demographic. Younger people are starting to go on those as well. But I think you're going to get this shift away from the young to the old and men of the old in many of these old places where the 1830 style holidays used to go. So basically raising rates will mean that these people have more money, which means that people are going to spend more time. Older people are going to spend more time at the beaches. You're going to see more tracks on the sand from these wheelchairs. Yeah, it'll, it'll be the, the older folks enjoying the... The beaches, not the, not the 18 to 30 crowd. Right. That's right. Oh, so they'll kick us all out. Yeah. Okay. I have, I have like I have like a year left. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so so, what are your what are your takeaways here? What are you getting okay? From there's this? a lot of directions that raising rates. Could, I mean, raising rates could go in so many different directions. Yes. But this is something that mostly we up. mostly up. But yeah. Super, but super. but it, I mean, in terms of how it affects our world, um, you know, you could go in terms of oil or banks or all sorts of other things. Um, but this is a huge trend that we're seeing right now, especially demographic effects. We know that people are getting older. What is it? 10,000 people are turning 65 every single day. We are, more and more people are reaching retirement age. I mean, so this is just a trend that we're going to see. And so, yeah, that kind of makes sense. I mean, you're going to have more people that have a lot more time on their hands. Um, I've heard of this where people go on cruises. A lot of older people are going on cruises and actually retiring on cruises. So that sort of like fits in with this whole thing where people are going to end up going to the beach. And yeah, I mean, if they're in a wheelchair, you're definitely going to see more tracks. Or it could be like the, the the Disney World thing where people just sort of wheel around and they don't necessarily need it. They just, you know, I mean. Which one? No, Disney World. You know, sometimes people wheel around and they don't, they don't. 
They don't need it? They don't need oh, to. They just like to, oh, to just, go really fast. So maybe you'll just see a lot of millennials. I mean, maybe it's something that I might do. I might wheel around. Because yeah. if it's floating, that sounds kind of awesome. That actually sounds kind of fun. Yeah. Um, but but the, the broader impacts is really what, what you see when rates rise is a bit of a wealth transfer from younger people to older people. Again, to, to, from people who have yet to make their money to people who are, have made their money already. And it, rates have been very low for a long time. And, and we could see the balance shift a bit in terms of who, who benefits from what's going on in the markets. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah, I think so. We, we're going to see this, um, you know, it's a, it's a generational shift that's been ongoing for a long time, and it just keeps on going. And at the moment, there haven't been many great breaks for the young, because even when rates were low, um, most of these guys were disqualified from ever borrowing good t- amounts of money. So it always seems to have favored that older generation. Yeah. And it's sort of right now we're on that precipice of that turn. It's sort of like, this is something that we have, we've, we've been in a low interest rate environment for such a long time. Mm-hmm. And so savers have been, you know, kind of screwed over. And so now this is finally what, might when we see things turning around. Yeah, I, I think so. I think I think it's easy to focus on the negative ramifications of, of market moves. But this is, this is, I mean, Roger, for people who are about to retire and haven't yet bought their bonds and are going to buy their bonds, it's not good for people, as we said, who bought their bonds already, but for people who are thinking about buying bonds or thinking about just keeping their money in the bank uh, because they're very risk-averse, it's actually, this is, a, this is a really positive development, no? It's a massively positive development in some ways, and I, I worked this one out with my, my dad in that um, I worked out that I would need to earn, or sorry, I need to save, myself save three times more than my dad earned in his whole life in order to get the income that he retired on based on the rates from two or three years ago. Now, as those rates go up, the amount that I would actually have to save is obviously going to fall, assuming I think that those rates, those higher rates are going to last uh, for a long time. So, um, yeah, it, it is. For people who are about to retire thinking putting their money into cash, it makes a big difference. So let's move on to our second segment today, which is called... Your Move. Your Move, yes. Okay. And so in this segment, we are going to debate a topic on the markets. Alex is going to take one side. I'm going to take the other side. We're going to have a minute on the clock. And Roger is going to be our judge. He's going to decide who wins and who loses. He'll give us grades at the end. And today we are going to debate, is there going to be a 20% drop in the market in the next year? I'm going to take the yay side. Alex has graciously t- decided to take the nay side. Yeah, because I could really take you, you to side. Do it either way. No views. It's just I'm <laughs> totally impartial. And I have whatever views you have, I have. Just remember Okay. That. Yeah. So, yeah, so don't, no need viewer, to trash Alex you. here. But yes, anyway. Um. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start. Yes. Um, we have a nice little chess clock. Oh, yes, exactly. So we're using our chess clock. Each, each person has one minute. Okay. Let's do it. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay, so I have three main points. One of them is that the market is overvalued. We see that through the CAPE ratio, which is a cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio. And that is two standard deviations above where the mean is. And so if we were to go back to the mean, that is going to be a 38% drop. The CAPE ratio has been above the mean for quite a while now. And it's actually come off substantially. The the overall price to earnings ratio on the S&P 500 has come down to 164 a little higher than averages, but but really not too much higher. So I, I don't think that's enough of a reason to, to predict a 20% drop. Okay, right now we are in the late stage of an expanded business cycle. And basically there are three main factors there. We have moderating economic growth, earnings pressure, and tightening credit. Those three things we're all seeing right now, and that's marking this late stage. But it's a stage in where we've seen earnings First quarter earnings up 25% year over year. Revenues up more than 8%. We're seeing, and it, the economy is really just starting to, it's been a very slow recovery, just starting to, to rev up here, uh, just like this car. And so, so I, I don't see why now is the time to predict a big drop. All of these earnings that we're seeing are not sustainable. So right now, a lot of they're pricing in um, a lot of these tax cuts and all sorts of things. So that's not going to be sustainable going forward. And we're not going to be able to see the same earnings growth that we saw this year. Plus, on top of that, we have uh, the Fed raising rates and they're raising rates quite dramatically. Uh, Right now, they're predicting two rate hikes. The market is expecting three rate hikes for the year. And so that's going to have a major effect on stocks. The Fed is only raising rates because the economy is so strong. The economy starts to teeter a little bit. They're just going to stop and basically continue to support this market. Uh, But if they do have to raise rates, and if they do raise rates faster than expected, uh, stocks are going to price that in. Ooh, sorry. Um, You know what? Stocks generally rise. That's it. So (laughs) 
<laughs> to say <laughs> shots true. fall twenty percent so infrequently that to say it's more than fifty percent chance, I think, is is pretty out there. Roger, who won? Well, I'm going to judge that based on who had the highest quality argument. And and Alex, given that you said, and these were your big reasons, that's not enough of a reason. I don't see now why we should have a big drop and stocks generally rise. <laughs> As arguments go, that was, that, that was uh, well, I'm not even sure I can even grade it, so I'm going to give it to Justine. <laughs> okay. She gave some Yay. good reasons. <laughs> All right. But, but hey, what about my points about how the economy's doing? There, there was one in there. I mean, I, I was just blinded by the banality of the other answers, so I, I just oh, kind of uh, skipped over uh, that. Market longevity is no reason yeah. for it to come to an end, so I agree with you on that point. And it Thank was you. one flash of brilliance and an otherwise very weak <gasps> argument. Oh, well, fair enough. All right, so I lost. That's fine. All right, well, that does it for this week's episode of The Knock-On Effect. You're welcome. Uh, <laughs> we have a new episode every Thursday on Real Vision. We are also released on the podcast app, or on whatever your podcast app is. Just look for Real Vision Presents, and we're going to drop the audio version there in case you don't want to look at our beautiful faces, which I really, frankly, don't understand why you wouldn't want oh, to Oh, no, of course you'd want to look at us. I think so. And then, of course, if you want more on the markets or more on economics, you should definitely check out realvision.com slash knockoneffect, where you can sign up for your 14-day free trial. Sounds like a pretty good deal. I think so. All right, see you next week.